President Trump accusing the special counsel and his team of a whole new set of conspiracy theories. Unfounded, not based in fact or reason, with no evidence to support them. The president says, back up, the president says that Robert Mueller and his team are meddling in the midterms. There's nothing to support that claim, and neither the president nor the White House has offered anything to support that claim. Yet here's the tweet. The 13 angry Democrats, plus people who worked eight years for Obama, working on the rigged Russia witch hunt, will be meddling with the midterm elections, especially now that Republicans, stay tough, are, ta are taking the lead in the polls. There was no collusion except by the Democrats. That was the tweet. The president claims the special counsel investigating Russia election interference and potential collusion with Team Trump will be meddling in our elections. There is nothing to indicate that's true. As for the rest of the tweet, documents show there are people who've registered as Democrats on the special counsel's team, but Robert Mueller is a Republican, and so is President Trump's Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who appointed Mueller, an appointment many top Republicans praised. And the so-called rigged Russia witch hunt is not a witch hunt. It has resulted in charges against four former Trump associates. Three pleaded guilty to lying to investigators about Russia. President Trump has also claimed the feds spied on his campaign with an informant. The president calls it Spygate. Fox News can confirm it is not. Fox News knows of no evidence to support the president's claim that lawmakers from both parties say using an informant to investigate suspected ties to Russia is not spying. It's part of the normal investigative process. Two words that continue to sound revolting together, like viscous discharge or moist stockings. The president made news on Tuesday with a startling decision. Breaking news. President Trump has just fired the embattled FBI director, James Comey. Surprise, everyone! Do you remember normal weeks? Because I don't. I don't remember what they felt like. Everything about Comey's firing was unusual, from the fact that he himself found out about it from TV, to the termination letter, which was genuinely weird, and not just because it featured Trump's signature, which looks like a heart rate monitor of a hamster on meth. It really does. It looks more like that than it looks like his name. Blankenship is already lobbying the Trump administration to oppose more onerous criminal laws for mine owners, saying they will not improve mine safety. And I would like to think that Trump would not listen to him because, you know, he loves the miners so much. But there's not much evidence of that. What there is evidence of is his affection for mine CEOs. His Secretary of Commerce is Wilbur Ross, who ran the company that had the deadly Sago mine disaster. And he's also close to that man that you saw earlier, Bob Murray, who claims that Trump called him shortly after the election to deliver a special message. He said, tell your coal miners I've got their back. And then he said, I love you, man. Well, congratulations on that, Bob. You're now in the very select group of people that Donald Trump has said, I love you to. Along with, presumably, the worst Baldwin, exactly one of his two daughters, and the hollow-eyed business ghost that greets him in the mirror every morning. Jared is incredibly smart, very talented, has enormous capacity. He is humble in the recognition of what he doesn't know and is tremendously secure in his ability to, to seek informed viewpoints. No, not you. Not you. I know your game now, not you. And also, to that point that he will seek informed viewpoints, that will be harder since there are still hundreds of key jobs across the government that Trump has not yet named nominees for, some agencies central to Jared's duties, including the Department of Transportation, the DEA, and the VA. It is too bad that Trump can't appoint someone to nominate people on his behalf, although even then, I am pretty sure that he'd give that job to Jared fucking Kushner. <laughs> To hear Donald Trump tell it, in recent years, we've been getting the short end of the stick. On the campaign trail, he often complained that America had become a global punchline and promised that he could reverse that. The world is laughing at us, folks. The whole world is laughing at us. They're laughing at this, at what's going on in our country. The world laughs at us, folks. The world laughs at us. And we're not going to be a laughing stock like we have been, and we have been, believe me. Oh. 
we're not going to be a laughing stock anymore, huh? It is insane that Trump, this guy, this guy, this guy, thought he would end the laughter. It's like a flamingo in boxer shorts named Phineas J. Rocket Dump ran for president under the slogan, Time to Get Serious. The issues go much deeper than just long wait times. Because while immigration courts have the trappings of a criminal court, you can wind up there from an arrest, uh, you can be detained, awaiting your hearing, and you're arguing against the government, they're actually civil courts. Because this is not a criminal trial. Their only task is deciding whether or not you can stay in the country. That's it. So a lot of things that you might assume someone in these courts would have access to, they don't. And the first big one is this. Unlike criminal court, an immigration court, the federal government is not required to provide lawyers to defendants who cannot afford them. Exactly. If you can't afford a lawyer, you have to defend yourself, which is clearly a terrible idea. Think of an immigration hearing like surgery. You can try and do it yourself, but if you ever want to see your fucking family again, maybe try and get a professional to help you. But the truth is, that is only part of the picture of Iran. There's also a large, educated, relatively liberal middle class, among whom opinions of America tend to be considerably more positive. You can see it in the fact that they have knockoffs of American restaurants there called McDonald's, ZFC, and Pizza Hat, which yeah, are obviously direct ripoffs of McDonald's, ZFG, and Pizza Hal. And and Iran's current president, Hassan Rouhani, is relatively moderate by Iranian standards, even going so far as to tweet a few years back, I wish all Jews, especially Iranian Jews, a blessed Rosh Hashanah. And when an Iranian leader begins a statement with the words, I wish all Jews, and actually sticks the landing, you kind of have to hand it to him there. And that is just one of many ludicrous opinions that Pence has expressed over the years. He also argued for the teaching of intelligent design in schools. He expressed a hope to consign Roe versus Wade to the ash heap of history. And as governor of Indiana responded to an HIV outbreak among drug users by dragging his feet on allowing needle exchange programs, during which time he said he was going to go home and pray on it. Which, and I realize this isn't necessarily the most relevant criticism here, but can't you do that? from the office. <laughs> so, so how can Kim Jong-un justify that spending? Well, he argues that the huge military is the only thing staving off imminent invasion from a host of outsiders, and that is where we come in. Because the most dominant and useful villain in North Korea's narrative is the United States. And it is not like that comes out of nowhere. We sided with the South during the Korean War, and while many Americans may have forgotten just how devastating that war was, the North Koreans certainly haven't. They have an entire museum devoted to American war atrocities. And I'm not saying that there were none, but I don't think any were quite as over the top as this. In the last liberation war during our strategic retreat, the American hyenas occupied the land of Shinchon. They arrested Min Yong Sheik and stabbed her muscles with a three-pronged spear and sucked her flowing blood. They also took the flesh from her thighs using a bayonet, dipped it in salt, and ate it. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can buy coasters depicting that scene in the museum gift shop, but they are $16, which is the real war crime there. <laughs> and Trump sources get even worse, because he also cited an article to support his Muslims on 9-11 claim from Infowars, a website run by this guy. Hillary and Obama want to make you poor and pathetic. We have all their white papers. They hate you. They hate prosperity. They hate God. They hate children. And goddamn them to hell. That man, that man is Alex Jones. And that is actually him at his most presentable. That is Alex Jones at a job interview. That's Alex Jones meeting his girlfriend's parents for the first time. Our main story tonight is abortion. And yes, yes, we have talked about it before. Last time we looked at the way abortion laws in America have in many places made access to abortion difficult uh, as clinics all over the country have shut down. But tonight we're going to focus on the exact opposite of an abortion clinic, something called a crisis pregnancy center. Facilities whose primary purpose is to talk women out of terminating a pregnancy. Something they don't often make that clear. Instead, running friendly looking ads like this. Before you make the decision about a pregnancy that comes at a less than perfect time, get jelly on the belly. Come to Sunrise Women's Clinic, a clinic where our nurses specialize in early pregnancy options. Okay. Jelly on the belly. 
is a pretty childish way to describe an important medical procedure. I'm not sure that I would trust a doctor that referred to colonoscopies as looking for cooties in the booties. <laughs> of rehabs feel free to make suspiciously impressive claims as one researcher found out we called inpatient programs and asked them what their success rate was and the lowest rate we got quoted was 80 percent you know i do know that about 80 percent of the clients who have come in here are now sober long term we've had about an 80 percent success rate here at 180 and then we would ask and on what data do you base that and no one had any data they had no hard data to back up their claims. And at that point, why even stop at 80%? Why not say you have a 140% success rate? For every 10 people that come into our facility, 14 emerge completely sober. Where did those extra four people come from? We have no idea. That's how good we are. And that's the thing. But what many New Yorkers remember most about the Giuliani years was his unrelentingly abrasive personal style. He had a weekly local radio show where he would take calls from constituents, which should be easy to do. You just listen to their concerns and you politely disagree whenever necessary. But just listen to this exchange with a ferret owner annoyed by the city's ban on owning them as pets. There's something deranged about you. No, there isn't, sir. You, the, there's a, the, the excessive the concern that you have for ferrets is something you should examine with a therapist. This conversation is over, David. Thank you. This excessive concern with little weasels is a sickness. That's right. That is the mayor of New York actively choosing to insult a New Yorker whose only crime was being a fan of ferrets. Concerns Italy, the country that gave us spaghetti, the Colosseum, and in a roundabout way, the guy who played turtle. So, it's a rich tapestry, that's basically what I'm saying. Now, Italy is holding an election next Sunday to select a new parliament and eventually a new prime minister. And you're probably thinking at this point, I don't even know who Italy's current prime minister is. I assumed it was just a Vespa in tank top. Well, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. There, there has been a lot of them. This will actually be Italy's 65th government in just over 70 years. So at that rate, it's probably hard for Italians to remember who their leader is. Uh, for the record, it's this man. Uh, also, for the record, it's not that man. I just typed Italian man into a stock image site, and he is what came up. You may at this point be thinking, but wait, how do you make money from Bitcoin? To which Dan would say, you just trade it on exchanges like any other currency. And if you then asked, well, how does it have value? Dan would reply, how does any money have value, man? And then he'd say, call me the brain for later, because I just blew your fucking mind. To which you'd say, forget I asked, Dan, you're absolutely gross, I hate you. But the problem is, Dan is kind of right. And this, this happens all the time. And the best innovators in Weasley Accounting have arguably been tech companies. Look at Apple. For years, they've been deferring paying U.S. taxes on foreign profits by stashing the money overseas and not bringing it back. So much so that at the end of last year, they had $269 billion parked overseas. And when their CEO, Tim Cook, appeared in front of Congress a few years back, he was very defensive about that. We pay all the taxes we owe, every single dollar. We don't move intellectual property offshore and use it to sell our products back to the United States to avoid taxes. We don't stash money on some Caribbean island. Now, he was technically correct there, because Apple didn't stash their money on a Caribbean island. They did, however, have it stashed on this island, Ireland, which is, <laughs> it is true, not in the Caribbean. But what is happening in Venezuela is not just extremely important, it is absolutely worth paying attention to, because this is not just a story about socialism. There are plenty of socialist countries that look nothing like Venezuela. It's a story about epic mismanagement. So epic that a nation of 31 million people with the largest oil reserves in the world have been forced to resort to some pretty creative forms of protest. Social media ablaze for the past few days, encouraging protesters to fill jars and bags with human feces. This is one of our last options, says this masked man. We are calling it Puputov Cocktails. Yes, Puputov Cocktails. Named, of course, after the Soviet premier, Vyacheslav Puputov, who was infamous for pooping in jars and throwing them at people. A little bit of history for you there. And while, while that is funny, because, you know, it's poop. <laughs> 
they have a series of hunting videos, which shouldn't be surprising. In fact, it makes complete sense. People do use guns when they hunt. But while the visuals are predictable beauty shots of nature, the voiceover takes a different path. The anti-hunters have imposed a false order on their lives based on a misconceived perception of the world. Death is evil, they believe, and so the purveyor of death must also be evil. Death is an undeniable fuel of life. Oh my God! That is less planet Earth and more deranged letter from a serial killer. Although, to be honest, I would respect the NRA a lot more if its slogan were just the NRA because death is an undeniable fuel of life. I would like it, but at least we'd be clear where they were coming from. I mean, the best I can do is uh, my badge had a drug problem that it couldn't bear to tell me about, so finally it decided to shoot itself with a gun that we found on a case, planning to die surrounded by its money because its views on death resembled those of ancient Egyptians. But even then, we are talking about a sentient police badge with an interest in Egyptology, so you're already banking on a pretty large suspension of disbelief there. Oh, and you should know, Luna was hired during the last recruitment surge. A and CBP will tell you what they told us, that while some agents did disgrace the badge with corruption, the vast majority did not. Although it is worth knowing that Tom Sheck, uh, the internal affairs guy, believes the problem is much bigger than they imply. Mr. Luna is not one bad apple. He is part of a rate of corruption that exceeded that of any other U.S. federal law enforcement agency. Okay, so it's less one bad apple than, oh my god, that is a lot of bad apples. Which, by the way, should really be the marketing theme for Red Delicious Apples. Red Delicious Apples. Well, at least we got the red part right. When you're in healthcare, it is, it, it, it is nicer, easier, whatever, in the sense that you're actually very directly helping human beings. But that's, to me, that's just not it. If I, if I had 1,400 Taco Bells uh, and 32,000 people who worked in them, I would, I would be doing all the same stuff. Yes, you heard him right. He just said he manages to beat a, a healthcare company like he would a Taco Bell, the exact opposite of a healthcare company. Look, Taco Bell has made a shell entirely out of fried chicken. Sounds crazy, but is it? So when you see the naked chicken chalupa with the first shell made entirely out of fried chicken, you might think it's crazy. Crazy delicious. You know, it's a pretty safe sign that your product is awful when your commercial has to assure people on two separate occasions, look, we know we sound mentally ill, but trust us, it is food. It's actually food, I know, I know. And if even an 83-year-old Republican from Alaska has come around on this issue, then it's probably time for our laws to catch up. And there are a bunch of ideas out there. One bill proposed just this week would remove marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act and officially rename the ATF the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Marijuana, Firearms and Explosives. Which does really make sense. Just get all the awesome stuff together in one place. In fact, why not keep going and make it the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Marijuana, uh, Firearms, Explosives, Monster Trucks, Motorcycle Jumps and sick-ass leather jackets with tigers on them. And by the way, that jacket is even sicker in person. This is my jacket. This was me this morning. This is an actual $6,000 Gucci jacket. And for anyone stupid enough to buy one of these, it's worthless now. I just made your jacket uncool and worthless by wearing it. Not yet to find any scientist who will say that there's no doubt, no doubt, that the mercury in vaccines does not contribute to autism. Now, they'll say there's no scientific evidence, there's no studies or anything that, that, that proves that yet, but turn that around. There are no studies that disprove it either. All right, all right, okay, but here's the thing. Proving a negative is an impossible standard. And that is also a slippery slope, because it means that I can say to you, uh, you, Dan Burton, are a donkey fucker. You dress up donkeys in cheerleader outfits, and you fuck them. It's what you're into, and you do it all the time. And, and you will say to me, well, wait, there is absolutely no evidence of me doing that. But I would say, turn that around. There's no evidence of you not doing that either. See, Dan? This, this is not a road that you want to go down. Uh, but, but it is worth noting 
Infrastructure investment is harder to measure than you may think, and Pi's numbers are in dispute. In fact, several companies have gone on the record saying their business has largely been unaffected by Title II. And maybe the best way to gauge Title II's impact is to listen to what cable companies told their own investors, to whom they are legally obligated to tell the truth. So here is what Verizon told its investors in 2014 about what the switch to Title II would mean for them. I mean, to be real clear, I mean, th this does not this does not influence uh, the way we invest. I mean, we're going to continue to invest in our networks and our platforms, both in wireless and, and wireline Fios and, and where we need to. So, so um, nothing will influence that. Oh, okay. So that doesn't really sound like net neutrality was jeopardizing investment at all. Although, to be fair, that was a phone call and it was Verizon. So it's entirely possible that every other word was dropped. <laughs> the one that strikes me is rural airports. We spend money to help subsidize rural airports where they otherwise couldn't have air service. Now, maybe that doesn't make any sense in an ideal world. Maybe on principle that's a bad thing. But the people who are going to lose their airports if we stop doing that are the people who voted for Donald Trump. So think about that. Trump's rise was fueled by people in red states who were justifiably irritated that liberals sometimes refer to them as flyover country. But this budget could literally turn some of them into flyover country because there would be no other option. And even some Republicans are now wary of this budget. Hal Rogers, a Republican and former chair of the House Appropriations Committee, went so far as to call many of the cuts draconian, careless, and counterproductive. And a Republican saying that about budget cuts is like a toddler telling you, this balloon fucking sucks. <laughs> really? I really thought you liked those. <laughs> now, now, here is the thing. Here's the thing on this. Freezing and unfreezing your credit can cost money which will go back to these companies, because seemingly they just can't fucking lose on this. And if you need any more proof of that, on the very same day the Congress was yelling at Equifax's former CEO, it emerged that the company had just been awarded a $7 million contract by the IRS to prevent fraud, which led one senator to make a pretty brutal comparison. You realize to many Americans right now that looks like... Uh... We're giving Lindsay Lohan the keys to the minibar. <laughs> I understand the point. That was the pause of a man thinking, do I let that pass? <laughs> do I correct him on how to pronounce Lohan? Or do I double down and pronounce her name Lingonberry Lahoney Baloney? <laughs> and, and, and it is not just Tucker here. Many Republican governors uh, and members of Congress have expressed real concern that this bill is going to actively hurt their states. While on the other hand, amazingly, those on the far right wing of the party, like Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama, think it's way too generous. This far and away is the biggest welfare program uh, ever sponsored. And quite frankly, it undermines the work ethic. It increases greater reliance on welfare from the federal government. Ultimately, it's going to result in the demise of our country, or at least contribute uh, to our debilitating insolvency and bankruptcy. So this bill seems almost universally hated in Washington. It is truly the Ted Cruz of health care legislation. <laughs> Fuck you, Ted. Fuck you from everybody. So, so the White House... Has. Now, Marine Le Pen actually kicked her father out of the party and has worked very hard to rehabilitate the National Front's reputation and present a softer image. And to listen to one French voter, it seems to have worked. Why vote Front National? It's simple. It's Marine Le Pen. If it were her father in charge, it would be no because he's a crazy old man. Back then, there were skinheads, thugs and fascists in the party. With Marine, it's not like that at all. There's an elegance, a bit of restraint. Yeah, but elegance presentation does not negate poisonous content. A Klansman is still a Klansman, even if you slap a monocle and a top hat on him and give him a cane. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Take off that sheet. I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! You're a monster, Peanut! You're a monster! <laughs> now, the next big term in here is health savings accounts, or HSAs. Tax-free accounts where you can save money to pay for health care costs. Republicans love these things. In your experience, why do these savings accounts, wh why are you pushing so hard for them? Why do you think they're effective? Because you're spending your own money as opposed to someone else's. It's like when my daughter goes to the mall with my credit card, 
are when I go to the mall with my credit card. <laughs> Our purchases come back quite different. Okay. Setting aside that healthcare is nothing like shopping at the mall, shouldn't you come back with different purchases than your daughter, regardless of whose credit card you have? If you came back from the mall with a tongue ring, a bottle of Manic Panic hair dye, and a Yas Queen crop top, it would raise a lot of questions having nothing to do with healthcare. Now, and look, Jones's products don't come cheap. For instance, he sells this one fluid ounce bottle of vitamin D3 for $29.95. But ConsumerLab.com, a supplement watchdog, points out that you can buy the same amount of D3 from other sources for less than $4. But Jones will often give you a hard sell. Sometimes he'll tell you his products are different than the ones that you can find in stores, and sometimes he'll go even bigger. It is absolutely in the crystalline form, the strongest, you absorb it. So, folks, don't go out to the store and get iodine from, say, one of the big chains. It'll kill you. Whoa! Wow! I honestly did not know that you could imply your competition kills people. Four out of five dentists prefer Trident gum, and the fifth dentist is dead because he put a piece of Wrigley's in his mouth, and that's basically suicide. But the problem is, the problem is, the impact of corrections like that, which may have sunk a candidate in another era, was compromised. Because there is no longer a consensus on what a fact is. Trust in mainstream media outlets has been falling, and people can choose to get their news from echo chambers that validate their views. And there is nothing inherently wrong with media that has a viewpoint. This show has a viewpoint. We fact-check everything we say, but I don't pretend to be neutral on things like criminal justice reform. I'm for it. Uh, Coldplay. I'm against it. Uh, or DeWalt's Ladders. They're a seamless blend of style and performance. Walking up one is like ascending to heaven on a golden cloud. I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just a fan. <laughs> and, and for America's toughest sheriff, Arpaio seemed to let certain crimes fall through the cracks. In 2011, it came out that his department had failed to properly investigate more than 400 sex crimes, some of which involved children. And while Arpaio eventually admitted to that, his apology left a lot to be desired. If there were any victims out there, I apologize. Uh, to those victims, if there were any. Hold on. If there were any, there were, we know that. That is a casual indifference to overlooking sex crimes so egregious, I'm genuinely surprised that Penn State hasn't erected a statue of him. Problem here is, lower quality DNA samples are sometimes presented to juries as if they are highly reliable. In 2003, a prosecutor in a double murder told the jury that the odds the defendant's DNA matched the glove found at the scene by chance was 1 in 1.1 billion. So that's pretty strikingly impressive. But it turned out the glove actually contained at least three people's DNA, and a later analysis put the odds closer to 1 in 2. And you know what? That's close enough, isn't it? <laughs> People do confuse the numbers 1.1 billion and 2 all the time. That's why I'm always mistakenly saying that my favorite R&B group is boys 1.1 billion men. <laughs> and the point here is, we seem to have forgotten how important antitrust is and are now all being forced to live with the consequences. Because this issue affects almost everything you do. Angry at banks? Well, the industry is dominated by just these four. Frustrated with your health insurance provider? Odds are it's one of these. And if this whole story is infuriating you so much that you are yearning for the sweet escape of death, well, bad luck, because the casket industry is controlled by these three companies. Oh, and it gets even worse. The afterlife is actually controlled by one religion. I'm not saying which one, but when you find out, you're going to be so mad. <laughs> if you're thinking, well, I'm sure after Orlando, if someone tries that, they'll succeed, because we're all paying attention now. Well, here's the thing about that. Representative Tony Cardenas tried to overturn it again just this Wednesday with an amendment to a mental health bill, and this was the result. All those in favor will say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 Can you chair the no's have it? Are you fucking kidding me? That happened four days ago, and I'm guessing that you're hearing about it for the first time now. To be honest, we only found out about it yesterday, and we've been working on this story all week. And look, and as for how the British economy will fare outside of EU negotiated trade agreements, that is also very much unclear. Uh, some argue that things could work out great, and that no matter what, British products are so desirable, they will find eager customers all around the world. And maybe that's true. 
maybe pork pies, marmite, mushy peas and undiagnosed clinical depression will all take the planet by storm. In case you're thinking, well, I'm definitely glad that I don't live near Hanford, remember, there are nuclear power plants storing waste all over the country, lots of it in so-called spent fuel pools. Uh, that's where nuclear fuel rods are supposed to be temporarily placed to cool down and then put into dry containers and then moved to permanent underground storage sites. But remember, we don't have one of those. And in many places, those pools are just accumulating more and more rods. And while experts say it's highly unlikely, if a Fukushima-like accident happens at one of those, the results could be catastrophic. The Northeast has a number of nuclear power plants, including the Indian Point plant just outside of New York City. If any one of those were to have a severe spent fuel pool accident, you're taking away a lot of big cities, a lot of farmlands, a lot of the United States for decades, perhaps centuries. That's right. Lots of big cities. New York, Hartford, Boston. And that last one is a real shame, because as, as I understand it, they only just got unracist yesterday. So, I mean, at least they could get to enjoy their new life. So...